as a data scientist, our main goal is to always derive the insights from our data and communicate this new knowledge to our clients. But then, of course, understanding and identifying what these insights are, what this new knowledge is, always come with a certain degree of challenge. And we always have two situations to consider when we deal with outliers. And mind you guys, these outliers can be sometimes a game changer in our understanding of a certain scenario. It's because, first, these outliers are the corrupted inputs we have in our data. And second, these outliers can be a new gold mine of information that we have to set aside first. And we're going to go back later on to these new values, to these values which are considered outliers for a certain data science case at hand. So not in all cases, we deal outliers as something that we are afraid of. So in this session, we are going to talk about how are we going to deal with outliers? Are they good or are they bad? So we're going to answer these questions as we go along with this process. So before we continue, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there because we have a lot of free data science courses for you guys. We do have machine learning algorithm, the deep learning mathematics, the different data science tips, and the different data science algorithms. These free learning resources can help you upskill yourself, and it's always for free. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for you to be notified every time we have a new session. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and always share this with your friends. So with respect to outliers, for more understanding, let's get into our job. So before we continue, let me first reiterate to you the steps that we have created so far. So the first is we did the creation of our new environment. And then we also read the data and we studied the data structure and we also did the data cleaning. And for that, we identified the null values and then we interpreted the different numerical distribution. And then last time, we also identified the different correlation values of the different pairs of our variables. And also, we identified those pairs which are negatively correlated and those which are positively correlated. And for this session, we're going to understand how to deal with the different outliers. So let me write here, deal with, dealing with outliers. Okay, so there are a lot of things we're going to talk about outliers for today. So you have to promise that you're going to stay until the end of this session for you to be able to apply the knowledge you're going to learn from this session in your project. So let's remember this, that our objective in this machine learning project is that we're going to identify the predicted values of the consumption of the energy of our appliances. So we are just going to focus on the appliances and maybe in the future, we're going to talk about the prediction of the energy consumption of our lights or even both of them as a whole. But for simplicity, we will just have the energy consumption of our appliances. So with that, let's first sort from our data frame, this one, the values of the energy consumed by our appliances. Okay, so I mean this one. Okay, so these are, oh no, sorry, not that one. Where is it? Okay, these ones, I mean. So these ones are the energy consumed by our appliances. So how are we going to sort the values of the energy consumed by our appliances? So to do that, we're going to name this one sorted appliances. So we're going to have this code to do that. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to sort the values in the ascending order. So the first values that would appear would be the highest values. And we are very much concerned with the highest values for now. It's because these are really very important for us to be able to identify whether or not these cases are outliers. So, okay. So uh, with this code, we're going to identify the values of the energy consumed by our appliances in descending order. 
not in the ascending one i would like to correct myself so what we will see first are the highest values so let's execute this one too no oops sorry the spelling is wrong right so we have these values and we could see that the highest energy consumed is 180 watts and then we have here 170 now so with this case because you already have this kind of numbers presented to you so let's go back first to this excel sheet presentation of the data so with respect to this one with respect to understanding first whether or not we're going to consider the values outliers is the most important thing is there should always be a meeting there should always be a talk between or among the data scientists the department heads or the executives and the subject experts of the subject matter of the data science project and why do i have to say this the reason for this is that these experts have the proper experience have the knowledge of whether or not the consumption of the energy is logical or not logical so with respect to our data let's go back to this one the 1080 the 1070 910 900 890 for a certain house to consume this amount of energy is actually not logical okay so because these amounts of energy can be equal to those consumed by commercial establishments so with this what we have in mind based on a certain wisdom of the domain experts there could have been some kind of faults with respect to the recording of the energy consumed so it could be that the detector or the sensor was not working properly or it could have been because of some other defects that we don't know so with that the question is this are we going to consider the, them outliers definitely the answer is this so later on we're going still to identify that even if the values are lower than these values we would consider them outliers but then we are still going to include them in our data set for the purpose of forecasting or prediction so later on we will discuss about all of these things so for now let's proceed to our discussion supposing the decision of the meeting is we are going to consider only the one percent of the values as outliers so what are we going to do how are we going to identify this one percent of our data so to do that let's have this one so we are now going to execute this code so when we do the execution of this code then we are given 19 so it means to say that the one percent of the values out of 19,000 plus values of the energy consumed is we only have 19 okay so now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to identify what is the value of the 19th place in our data so if we're going to look at this one so one two three four five so we're going to identify the 19th place because the 19th place would be our baseline for us to be able to identify whether or not we're going to go for more than or less than but in this case we're going to go for more than because we are actually looking for the higher value of a certain boundary so to do that we're going to have this one so what's the value of this 19th place let's find out so now what we have here is that we have 790 as the baseline of our value so that means to say that above 790 would be considered outliers as far as our study is concerned is because again we have decided that only those values that are in the upper one percent would be considered our outliers although later on we will really identify what are these values which are really outliers in the statistical point of view okay so for us to be able to identify 
and to present these outliers we're going to show them in a box plot and to do this we're going to have this so as you could see here this is just actually the repetition of some of the codes that we have just had so here for this one and this one is this but then we have just added something for us to clearly see our label and what these ones are really all about and this one we use this one to generate our box plot for appliances we're going to execute this one and let's see what is in our data right so now we have in here the right so the values that are not outliers on the point of view of statistics are those values that are just here okay here so let's remember this that in of course in our statistics we've been taught about the iqr right and i believe you already know that so this is our five number summary but for the sake of our lesson let me discuss a little bit about our outliers so this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value within the range of our data that cannot be considered outliers per se and these values that we could find here are actually outliers so if we are going to apply strictly statistics in this case then we could say that all of these values are outliers but then the question is this if we are going to take them away from our data set the problem is that our result would be significantly be affected and that is always in a bad way so we would not want that to happen so that is why we just decided that we only have to get the one percent of the values in our data set which we have considered to be very illogical as far as the experts opinion and experiences are concerned so that is why only those values which are higher than 790 are considered outliers in our case and what are we going to do then of course we are going to drop these outliers those values which are above 790 and of course if there are outliers which are below this one okay so we're going to have this one so that we can properly see what's going on so df so we're going to use the drop now function for this one so so again what we are going to drop are those values that are higher than 790 and those which are less than zero okay and then of course we index these values because we're going to use these values for our forecasting or prediction so let's do this one and then so the values are already dropped from our data set okay so if you would like to confirm if these values are already dropped what we're going to do is that we're going to see if the values are still around so we're going to again use this kind of code and we're going to execute this copy and let's see if it's still here so let's find out let's okay enter okay so no more right so again we have just deleted those values which are higher than 790 and as you could see when we are done with the execution of this one then what we have are the values here okay and maybe you would like to ask me is this the kind of technique that is best out there to detect our outliers this is not the best one and speaking of the best actually there are actually a lot of techniques out there so for example again we have iqr and we also could use elliptic envelope to identify what these values are but of course we have to use these techniques very much properly we're going to use this with much care and prudence because we are dealing with business cases we are dealing with data that is also very important for a certain business or an organization and our small mistake can create millions or billions of losses so that's why we have to be very much careful so do you want to know more about this channel 
please don't forget to click the cards on your screen because we do have a lot of lessons for you guys for free. We do have mastering machine learning algorithm, deep learning mathematics, data science algorithms, the different data science tips, and more. Learn and upskill for free.